This is Kasim with Solutions 8, and today I want to show you how to use the segment feature inside of Google Ads so you can slice and dice your campaigns and start to see what's really going on. Now, the first disclaimer I'll make before we dive into this is don't use this tool unless you have a lot of data. Um, I mean, you don't need a billion dollars piped through your campaign, but a couple grand, I think, at, at a minimum, because otherwise you're not going to have much to segment. And it's, um, it's easy to start... Uh, finding correlation that isn't necessarily causation. So that disclaimer aside, let's hop into it. Um, the client I'm using here does uh, spine surgery, and uh, I actually chose them as the campaign to, to illustrate this just because they do have um, a nice and linear offering. So it means that the segmentation is going to be you know, there's an easier line of sight. If it's, you know, I put up an ad for my offering and then you see the ad and then you click on the ad and then you call me and then I perform a service. Uh, that's what I would consider to be a linear offering. If you have a multifaceted offering, it doesn't make segmentation um, any less viable. As a matter of fact, it probably amplifies the value of it, but it would make this video a lot harder because now I'm trying to explain, you know, the, the client's use case as well as uh, how to use the segment feature. So um, when you're in your campaigns, uh, one of the tools you're going to see is segment. So let's click on segment. Now, there's a bunch of different types in here. I'm not going to go over every one. I'm just going to go over the ones that I like the most. Um, we'll start with time. So hour of the day can be interesting depending on your business. Um, you know, if you're an emergency plumber or septic tank person or, um, you know, anything that, that requires uh, some level of time attribution, this is probably worth looking at. For this particular client, it's really not that big a deal. I mean, I could probably dig into the conversions and I'm like, oh, look, here's, you know, a significant number of conversions and they're all coming in at 10 a.m. I uh, wonder why somebody wants spine surgery at 10 a.m. But I'm not going to pay as much attention to this uh, breakdown. Um, for this particular client, but I did want you to know that it's there because there are clients where or campaigns where it's ultra applicable. The one that I really like for this uh, client, and you can see week, month, quarter, year, um, those will be applicable in various uh, instances, but I'm going to look at day of the week. And what's really interesting about day of the week is you can see here, Monday, for whatever reason, um, is not just our highest performing day, but it's also the least expensive. Um, or I guess second only to Friday. So what I think is, but is interesting about Monday is my my guess there, and this is anecdotal obviously, but people just spent all weekend suffering with, you know, whatever back pain they had. And they're like, all right, I'm coming, I'm coming in on Monday, um, and you know that might be the easiest time to get a hold of uh, of this particular client. So um, now I wouldn't take action based solely off of what I have here. There's not enough data. And if you want to scroll down a little bit, you can see that this is a normal search ad. But if we look at the DSA campaigns, um, it actually flips, so Monday becomes the most expensive day, um, which it's not unusual to see a DSA go into different directions just because of the way that it functions, and we'll start to see more of that inside of the segmentation here in just a moment. Um, looking at the competitive campaigns, um, it looks like Monday is the higher performer, and uh, some of our expanded campaigns aren't live. So um, one example of a solid segment, but you can see how if I had, you know, a year's worth of data and I started to see consistently that Monday outperformed every single um, other day, what I might do is, you know, I mean, you can make positive bid adjustments for the day if you want to. Um, it appears that honestly, I bet you that's already in place uh, for this particular campaign, but you can start to make strategic decisions to make sure that you're aligning with whatever it is that you're seeing. Um, let's take a look at some other ones. Uh, click type. Interesting, but you know maybe not ultra applicable for this particular client, or at least it's not as much as it might be for um, for clients that are that are very localized or have really localized actions. So you can see a mobile click to call, site link extension, driving directions, get location details. Um, so kind of interesting information. Not uh, perfect for this client, but there there are campaigns where this makes a lot of sense. Now conversion action. This is really interesting. This client has uh, various conversion actions. Um, you can see that obviously there's ask the doctor, uh, call, they can take a quiz that we have online. Um, they can chat, which is our highest performing conversion action. Fill out the contact form. Um, they have a free MRI review. Now, this is very interesting. And this is the type of information that I would need available to me in order to optimize this campaign because you can see how much chat is prioritized. Um, and there are campaigns where they might not necessarily even have a chat feature. So um, knowing this information arms me with the data that I need to, um, you know, expand campaigns, optimize uh, the, the landing pages that we're using, um, and then make sure that, you know, we understand what conversion action is actually functioning for us. Because if anybody ever, you know, decided to turn chat off or deprioritize it, or honestly, even reskin it, 
that could have a catastrophic effect on this campaign. So, you know, something as little as choosing to make the chat bubble not proactive, which I've seen her to campaign in the past. Um, that's the type of thing that I now get to safeguard against because I know, you know, what what particular action is taking place when somebody converts. Um, this is also a, a really solid note as to why you need to uh, label your conversion actions. Um, you might have conversion categories too. That's probably for a more expensive campaign, not this one. Uh, conversion source is going to be more applicable um, if you have your conversion set up in a way where um, this is going to be where that influence is, is necessary for you to, to, to break down. It doesn't really factor into this particular campaign. That might be um, a, a, a better thing to um, split apart if you're in particular worried about attribution, for instance. And then you can take a look at your uh, website conversions versus analytics conversions. And, um, you know, in, in some ways, that's kind of more of a um, reconciliation tool than anything else, but still very valuable data. Um, not a whole lot else here that I'm going to draw upon for this particular client. Um, let's take a look at device, though. Device could be really interesting. Uh, I do see devices playing pretty heavily into um, the way that campaigns tend to succeed. But I also noticed that Google makes these adjustments for us in many cases. And so I, I tend to, to be a little trepidatious about making too many um, device-based bid adjustments, especially because when you're talking about um, different devices, there's also the, the high likelihood that you're not tracking the entire session. So you have a broken session ID. So if, you know, uh, we're seeing that somebody, you know, gosh, I'm having a bunch of conversions on uh, computers. Well, that could actually have been catalyzed initially by a smartphone. And then we just can't tell that that carried over into the computer. Um, and so, you know, that, that, that narrative, so to speak, isn't, um, is broken. The continuity isn't there. So I'd, I'd caution you against making, um, device-based adjustments uh, unless there's just staggering data that shows like, gosh, we're just crushing mobile. Let's, let's put everything on mobile. Um, and, you know, again, be cautious about understanding your, your top conversion paths too, because just because all your, you know, your conversions are coming from mobile, the, the closed business might come from mobile, but the customer might've been earned, um, you know, using a different device. So, um, that disclaimer aside, this can be really good information. Uh, the network, this is always interesting to see how Google's performing against the search partner network. Uh, and, you know, depending on how you feel about search partners, uh, it might influence how you choose to, to, to use them. I'm actually, as you can see, we're a fan. I think it's quality traffic. It's not always as high quality as Google, but sometimes it's um, it performs better. You can see actually in the competitor ecosystem here, um, search partners is doing really well. Um, top conversion, uh, or excuse me, top of page versus others. So you can see how we perform when we're top of page versus how we perform at the bottom of page. This, by the way, is not position number one. This is just above the search results. And this is beneath the search results. Um, and then, you know, display network and then search partners, same breakdown. Um, at destination, um, you can see various items here, depending on um, the, the type of campaign. You'll notice that DSA tends to be a little bit more expansive, which is not surprising at all. But um, the segment tool, I wouldn't overuse it. Again, make sure that you have enough data in order to really, uh, in order to feel comfortable that your decisions are actionable. But with that said, it's one that gets largely ignored. And you can see there's some real gems in there. Um, and so, you know, having that data accessible to you and then checking it on a regular basis, so you know, what type of adjustments to make in your campaigns. Those are the type of small micro optimizations that can make a really big difference over time. So make sure you get enough data and by enough, by the way, we optimize off of what we call a base 100 optimization rate, which is the statisticians model. And that means that academically speaking, a hundred impressions tells you uh, whether or not you have a uh, good clicks, a hundred clicks tells you whether or not you have a good click through rate. A hundred conversions tells you whether or not you have solid lead quality. Now, most businesses can't wait that long across, you know, all, um, dimensions, but it's just a good thing to know, like, okay, if I have a hundred data points that I should begin to make decisions here. I hope this is helpful. If you have questions or ideas, or if you disagree with anything I said, hit me in the comments. I respond to every comment personally. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If uh, you want to get notified anytime we post videos, which happens daily, by the way, then hit the subscribe button. If you hit the bell, you'll get notified with every single individual video. And if we get a thousand subscribers, we get to start going live, which should be tons of fun. So please help us uh, with that goal. Otherwise, I really appreciate you watching. Um, super grateful for your attention, and I hope I get to see you tomorrow.